Hey everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Exley Diet Art by Science, and today I'm going to do a focus fiber uh, lace spinning tutorial video um, featuring cashmere. Um, but first, I wanted to point out over here, I brought out our stuffed animals because some people were asking where they were. Um, in our last apartment, we had a studio, so there was just the bed right behind the computer, whereas in this place we have two bedrooms, so they usually inhabit the room over there. Um, so I thought I would bring them out and put them in the videos again because apparently people like looking at them. <laughs> so the bunny is Monty and the little puppy dog, which is a retriever, is Socket. So there they are in the background just chilling, being adorable. <laughs> All right, so I had a little over of a pound of cashmere and I kind of bought it sort of in, as an impulse. I saw it, it was a great price, and decided, you know, I should just jump in and, and make something with it because it's such a beautiful fiber. It's like the quintessential luxury of, you know, anything, sweaters, mittens, you name it. It's um, actually not as difficult a fiber to work with as Angora, and I'm finding that out because I'm currently spinning it on my um, golden ring spindle. Now, what I wanted to talk about today was um, basically how I'm doing the fiber prep for cashmere, and um, you can you can sort of take what you can from this because this is still my learning experience. But I thought I would share it with you guys because you know it's an opportunity to sort of do a virtual spinning community where we're kind of learning things together. Because um, in South Korea, they don't really do much with spinning, and the knitting groups I've found are like an hour away from me. I live on the outskirts of Seoul, so, you know, people I could, you know, hang out with are just so far away, and it's kind of a pain because it's on the road, it doesn't seem like it's very far away, but, you know, with the traffic, and then the subway, sometimes there's like two or three transfers, so it can be kind of a, a long trek to get there. Um, anyway, so I have all of this dehaired cashmere, and it's this beautiful, like, honey champagne cream color. I know it's not really showing up too well. It kind of looks white, but it's not white, and this is the natural color. I definitely prefer the natural colors over the um, bleached ones because there's something that gets lost with the fiber. Um, the bleach will strip the color, and it's just like if you were to get um, your hair lightened, it bleaches all of the pigment out of your hair and it can and it can leave it feeling a little bit thinner than it would be. So the same thing happens when you bleach a fiber like this to make it white, unless it's natural. Um, so for me this cream color is actually just perfect. Um, there are a lot of characteristics about the fiber that I will go into, but I found a really great website that talks about it, so I will post that in the description below, but it's a pretty crimpy fiber and it's relatively short. It's about around an inch and a half or so long, so it puts it on par with um, Angora. Angora can be anywhere between an inch and a half and three inches. The three inches is usually courtesy of people who actually grow it for hand spinners, um, but the commercial market for Angora is usually about an inch and a half long. Um, anyway, so because this is actually not a supported spindle and I'm trying to spin this cashmere very fine, I have a very small cop that I have built up here. You can kind of see. Let me uh, get this focused. Just one second. Oops. Oh, I got to turn the button off. I know how to use this, I promise. Okay, so you can see how I how I built the cop. It kind of goes around like this up and down, not not just a very tight spiral up and down. It kind of goes at an angle. Um, and the reason why I did it is because it's a little bit more stable to um, do it in this way than to do it in a very tight spiral. 
because the tight spiral, sometimes the yarn, if it's real thin, will get stuck in between the layers, and then sometimes it'll felt if it's warm and you've been touching it a lot. So that's part of the reason why I prefer this method. But since this is a 0.4 ounce spindle and everything that I add is going to keep adding more weight, I don't want this thin yarn to be overspun. And um, what my plan is to make is to make um, very small skeins of this, this cashmere. And I'm going to keep it as a single because I think it's going to be a very nice lace yarn for like um what am I thinking of? Like um like a shawl or you know just something very lightweight for around the neck that has a lot of loft and poof that will keep me my neck ridiculously warm. So um you can see attached here there's sort of like a little roll lag that I made. Now I did the same thing with the yak down that I used for my fingerless mitts. Um, Basically, because it has a very similar quality to cashmere, it's a little bit coarser than cashmere, but yak down is often considered um, like the poor man's cashmere. I understand why, but yak down is also amazing by itself, so I would prefer to call it yak down rather than poor man's cashmere. <laughs> but there you go, history. Um, so basically, what I did to make these um, little roll eyes is I pulled some of the fiber off like this, and I kind of opened up the fatter spots so that I could see through it. Uh, you can kind of see my face actually through this fiber. And that's kind of what you're looking for. You want thin layers where there's not too many fat spots. And a piece about this big. You know, maybe three, three and a half inches tall. And you're going to do that again. Like this. And they don't have to be all uniform sizes, but you but you really do want to focus on getting the fat parts out, like that. And then you just layer it, or not layer it, but overlap it slightly with the other piece that you had. And basically, you're going to start um, building kind of like a sheet of cashmere with this method. And when you're done building the sheet, you can roll it up into a nice lofty roll leg. And this is perfect for people who don't have um, hand cards or anything. As long as your fiber has been processed to some extent, um, this one has been washed and dehaired and carded. So I don't have to worry about too many knots. It spins very, very easily. But here you go. So this is, this is what I've made. I've got like a handful of fiber here. And this is probably as much as you need. This is probably about a gram of fiber like that. And you can use um, like a knitting needle that's about this thickness. Or you can just take the ends and start rolling them up on themselves. And I'll do that down here just because it's easier to do it two-handed rather than just one-handed. And you don't want to press down too hard because you've added air to the fiber. So it's going to be really easy to draft and it's going to be a very lofty fiber. So if you push down too hard, it's going to, de it's going to compress it and basically undo all of the effort that you just did to open up the fiber and add that air. And then in the end, you can, you can kind of turn it and squish it just a little bit to get it to hold a form. But this is a you know, a very simple roll lag. And when you're spinning, I'll demonstrate here really quick. When you're spinning, it's very wow. easy to open up the fiber and, and draft it out like that. I know my fingers are kind of getting in the way, but um, I kind of pull kind of pull the, the fiber sideways like this so that I can form a triangle and then I grab it with my other hand. Oh, oh, I got a little more twist here. And then while this is open I can pull down and add the twist 
and I'm pinching my fiber supply at the top. I'm pinching my fiber supply up here at the top to make sure that twist doesn't enter into it. Check your tension. All right, got this little guy over here in the end. See that? Perfect amount of tension. Winding it up and down, and then back up to the hook. Okay, and I have found this to be a really great way to keep the fiber all contained. Um, it's easy for me to use one hand really to. Um, like I, I do this to pull the fiber down um, and I never really feel like I have a big clump or it becomes unmanageable. Just make sure that your roll lags are reasonably sized. You know, you wouldn't want anything bigger than this. And you don't have to draft this out. You can just draft as you go. Um, or, you, you know, if you feel comfortable, you can draft it out a little bit if you want, but you don't really have to. Um, for me, it makes it a little bit brittle because we're not using cards. Or not brittle, but like it doesn't hold together as well because we're not using cards to incorporate all the fibers against each other so that they lay flat and then like pull their neighbors out into a really nice roll leg. This is sort of like a cheater's version, um, but it works. It works surprisingly well for um, really very little fiber prep. Um, so this is the this is the method that I have chosen to make this cashmere yarn, and it's working very well. I used this method for spinning my yak down, but I used my spinning wheel for it, and I also applied it. So um, this is another test for me to see how well it does turn out. And um, so far, I'm very happy with the results. I will post pictures of the finished skeins um, on Facebook, but for now, I'm just spinning until I feel like the the spindle is getting too heavy and then I'll just take it off skein it up and like really adorable little skein will probably be like the skein will probably be like this long <laughs> when I'm done um, and then you know I'll wash everything all at once and I'll probably end up dyeing it. I've got a bunch of natural dyes building up in my kitchen cabinet uh, pomegranate um, the skin from the pomegranate and like the parts the film from in between, that stuff is going to be used for a dye bath, and I also have a bunch of onion skins because I guess I cook with a lot of onions. <laughs> anyway, so if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, if you have further suggestions about these fiber focused videos, uh, let me know in the comments below if um, there's something that I missed that you think I should really include in these videos, let me know as well. Um, and if you have, um, like Facebook and Twitter, you can go there and follow me or fan me there. And, um, I also have a blog where I will usually end up posting pictures and other related tutorials, um, some interesting things that I'm working on as well. So check me out there. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.